I think to be a great real estate agent, I have to be a great marketer first in order to be a great negotiator second, right? Like what's going to make a buyer get up from their chair, jump in their car, and then drive to our house? Like what's what's so special about that property? All right, if you're someone that's looking to sell your home in today's market, there's a bunch of things you have to consider. And I thought, you know, what a better option than to bring Robert Ortiz, one of our top listing agents on our team, uh, to this podcast to really just speak to anybody who's looking to sell out there, right? Yeah. You, you work with a lot of sellers. I do. That's your primary focus. That's my niche, yep. And your niche, and you consistently help sellers get top dollar. I do. Right. I and do. Uh, it's great, right? It's great, it but there's a lot that goes into that. Right. So I want to break that down for anybody who's thinking of selling, right? And 2023, the market's different right now. There's things you got to think about. And so overall, Rob, like, let's kick it off. Like, what's what's it like to be a seller right now? Uh, what's it like to be a seller? Listen, uh, every time I go into these conversations uh, with potential home- homeowners looking to sell the property, yeah. uh, I let them know that that by, probably by the end of the process, we're going to be high-fiving. I mean, we, we, we it's low inventory. We're considering this still a seller's market. Yeah. So the results that we're getting... Um, are still aligned with that with that type of market. So what does that mean? Usually uh, home prices are, are skyrocketing, mm-hmm. um, skyrocketing upward. So yeah, they're definitely, they're, they're stoked about it at the end of the day. Got it. So it's the market is in favor of sellers right now. Oh yeah, right? definitely. Due to low inventory, high demand in our area. Correct. Uh, people are getting top dollar. But it's, I think everyone knows that, right? But right. there's a difference between selling your home for top dollar and then really maximizing. Right, right you know, the opportunity right now, right. right? And those are things that I think you're really good at. Yeah. So maybe walk us through, like, what are some of the ways that you're helping sellers maximize, right? Because it's one thing, like, to sell for a million, but to get that extra 100000 a million, right. 100000 that's where the I think the skill and the strategy comes into play, right? Right, right. So we could take this a couple of ways, but um, let's take it in from, from the beginning. I mean, I think to be a great real estate agent, um, I have to be a great marketer first in order to be a great negotiator second. Got it. And and what do I mean by that? I mean that my job is to kind of go in there and look at it from the point of view of from a buyer, right? Like what's going to make a buyer uh, get up from their chair, jump in their car, and then drive to our house? Like what's what's so special about that property, yeah. right? So this is now where we uh, where we kind of make some small little tweaks in order not to just drive as much eyeballs and bodies through that front door, but also how to create that attention so we can get the most amount of people coming through that uh, that, that front door. Yeah, create that buzz, right? Create that buzz, yeah. And so what are some of the things, I guess, that you're doing to create buzz for properties, right? Walk me through that. If someone's thinking to sell, thinking to sell their property right now, what's the game plan that you like to follow? And is any like, you know, steps that you could break down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so presentation of the home, right? I have split seconds, especially with everyone's attention spans nowadays, is everybody's glued to their screens where I only have like maybe one or two seconds to catch your attention. So the way I describe it to uh, homeowners is that it's my job to try to engage and capture as much attention as I can. So how do I do that? I make sure that I have a great product to put out on the market. Okay. Now, how that product looks, we can dive into that a little bit more about yeah. what needs to happen in order, in order to kind of. So, so when you say attention. presentation, you're meaning because um, people are shopping online, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. the first thing that they see are going to be those photos, correct? What the property looks like, right? Right, like the the selling of the property starts before they get to the property. Oh, right? hands down. Because of everything being online. Yeah, right? it starts off on that Sunday at at eleven o'clock when they're talking to their partner on the couch and they say, "Hey, honey, take a look at this place here." Yeah. Right. And it's just enough to capture that intention to make them take the next step. Got it. Right. And it's funny because I just stayed at an Airbnb, Airbnb for the holiday weekend. And yeah, that's the same thing we did. Right. Yeah. Me and, you know, our party were going out there and we start looking and we're looking at the photos. Yeah, that's natural. We're looking at the photos and there was ones where you can clearly see that they put effort into the photography. Right. And there was ones that you can clearly see that it was just either they took them, you know, they, were, they weren't professional. Right. right? I wasn't say on their iPhone, but iPhone does really cool stuff yeah. nowadays. Yeah. But you could tell like they just didn't know lighting. They didn't know colors. They didn't know angles angles and stuff like that. Yeah. How important is the photography? Photography. To, to... Photography. So, so it is my job to capture detail in a property, yeah. right? So I've been in some really cool homes where these little nooks and crannies that people really don't get to see. Um, I get to see that. Yeah. But as a marketer, 
and I think it's cool, I want people to see that. I'll, I'll give you an example. If you go to some of these old places like in Willow Glen, there's a little there's a little nook area. Back in the days, that used to be where the old telephones used to be at. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember right? this. So those little cool little things that, that kind of um, just gives it a cool factor on the yeah, home. Yeah. I, we want to showcase that off. Here, another, th there's an ironing board on the old Willow Glen. Talking about that, there's an ironing board. But back in the days, they used to have the ironing board. Oh, it'd come out of the wall, right? It'd come out the wall. Yeah. So what a lot of people are doing with that now, instead of getting rid of that, they're turning that into a spice rack, right? Uh. So they're taking out the ironing board and putting spice racks there. These little small details there, these are things that I want to showcase. These are things that I want to, the character of the property that I want to show. Pictures do a great job yeah. of showcasing this. Now, lighting, great camera, a great photographer, the background is able to capture these little details and then is able to relay it in picture form. Yeah, you could tell too, like, you know, even angles, getting the pictures oh, at, yeah. at the right angle is gonna give the appearance of a bigger, bigger. property and yep. stuff like that. Your job is to get people to show up, yep. right? That's so my if your job. pictures aren't saying wow, right. or capturing your attention, someone may just scroll to the next property, That's right. just like I did with the Airbnb. There were some that they were probably nice, right. Right. but because the photos didn't look good, I just went to the next one. Right, right, right. it happens. And now they lost me as a potential customer. It happens all the time, it happens all the time. And then it happens even to the point where uh, where they don't go back. So once, they've, once buyers have already denied it once, yeah. Trying to go back and get their attention is is hard. Yeah. It, it never usually happens. I only really honestly get one shot. I have tricks to make that go around, yeah. but I mean, we want to make a great impression the first time around. First time around. Yeah, you only have one chance to make your right. first impression is what they say. Okay, so the photography, right, has to look stellar is, is what you're saying. Now, what about improvements, right? That's a big thing that right. people ask. Like, should I fix up my property? Even though the market's hot, it's going to sell anyways. Should I fix it up? If I do, should I put money into it? What? What are some of the things that people should pay attention to? Okay. What would so you that's, say? That's a great question. Um, my job as a real estate agent is to provide options, yeah. right? So not every homeowner wants to do improvements, yeah. but there's consequences, right? Everything has an effect, yeah. right? So if you decide not that you don't want to go down that route, the effect could possibly be that the, the price. Yeah. We might not get as much traction coming through the home. We might, uh, you know, there, there's, there might it might be non favorable to the goals that we're looking for. Yeah. Right. Now, if we're looking to create top dollar to get the most amount of money, there's going to have to be some effort that is involved in yeah. trying to get that top dollar. There is some work that needs to be done. Yeah. Right. So, and I know, like, when the market's hot, yes, the home will sell. But yeah. what price is it going to sell on the higher end of the spectrum? Right. There's always a range, right? right. In, right. in any given neighborhood. Yeah. So I, I, I give out ranges. So uh, when I go out to a property. I, I, I always give out ranges and these ranges, I'm gonna give you an example, like, hey, listen, your house is worth anywhere from a million to a million and 100, example, right? I now give them the choice of where do you wanna be on that range? Got it. Right, so if they decide, say, hey, listen, Rob, I wanna go for a million and 100 and more, right? Well, then at that point, I go ahead and provide them with what is required of them in order to get these higher numbers. Got it, got right? it. Now, if it's just a person that says, hey, listen, Robert, honestly, my needs, I just want to sell the property and get out of here. There's there's yeah. other issues that, that, are, that are more important. Just sell the house and get it over with, right? Yeah. Then maybe going down the lengthy route and the costly route of making remods might not be the best direction to go. Got it. So maybe they get a million instead of 1.1. But they didn't have to go through the hassle of right. fixing up their property. Right, right. But honestly, a lot, a lot of what we do, um, I think for the majority of the properties that I've seen, we're not doing major, major renovations, right? No. That's like a you know case by case, but it's usually like the easy stuff, right? So what yeah. are the simple things that go a long way, like when you're getting your property ready? If you're planning on doing any sort of remods, the way that you should look at it as a homeowner is that for every dollar that you put out, you should be expecting to get $3 back. Got okay, it. and and what that means is, let's just take a simple paint job. Yeah. I mean, paint jobs in the grand scheme, they're relatively cheap, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just say, for example, you could probably paint a whole house for sixty-five, seventy-five hundred dollars, yeah. a standard house, yeah. right? But the return that you're going to get from that is a lot greater than that sixty-five. I can justify why someone should pay that money, yeah. right? Certain things. Uh, uh, may not be justifiable, right? Uh, hey, listen, I just replaced my roof 10 years ago. Should I do it again? Well, hey, listen, that might not make sense. Yeah, it's, it's still good, right? It's still good. Maybe we should leave that alone. So, you know, this is where maybe working with a professional that has done this many, you know, uh, uh, for, that has done many projects like this, yeah. throw them in there, get their opinion, and at that point, both you guys will have a conversation on what is gonna be done and what's not gonna be done in the property. 
Yeah, and I, I think you'd be surprised. I mean, paint goes a long way yeah. on property, right? A fresh coat of paint inside yeah. and out will can totally change the look of the property. Yeah, right. Just gives it a clean, fresh looking property. Smells fresh. Smells looks fresh. fresh yeah. Right. Nice crisp. You know, yeah. trim and all that stuff. The, the types of colors that you happen to pick out, right? I mean, listen, uh, a lot of home. They, they, People do a lot of great job in turning a, uh, make it into a home, right? Yeah. It's my job to turn it back into a house, yeah. right? And a house at that point is my job is to sell it to the masses. So I've got to, I've got to give a general paint line of what people are going to, are, are people going to like, yeah. right? So even the colors that you end up picking make a difference. Yeah. So yeah. sticking with colors that are maybe more neutral, neutral that colors. more people will like, that are not really specific to that one individual. Right. You want it to be able to appeal to the masses, right? Yeah. I had, I had a blue house. At a, at a whole room that was blue, like yeah. like uh, like baby blue. Yeah. Right. And uh, it was a family room. Yeah. Right. They loved it. Yeah. But maybe it wasn't as appealing when you end up selling the property. Where my suggestion would be, hey, listen, maybe we should, you know, maybe calm down these colors. Yeah. Right. And maybe just provide some suggestions on why we should calm these colors down. Got it. Got it. What about staging? How important is staging? Staging is day and night, guys. Yeah. You have no. You'd be surprised of the lack of imagination that people have. No offense, guys, right? Yeah. But I think in general, people don't have imagination. I'm in homes every single day yeah. where I can start to see things, right? I can see um, I can see diamonds and rough, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, buyers don't have that, that sense. Yeah. Um, so staging takes the thinking away from buyers. God. They're actually not trying to figure out, well, how would this look? Yeah. They're more now imagining how would I look in that property. Ah, uh, I like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because that, that's funny, right? Like, how's the couch going to go? How's the yeah. TV going to go? The coffee table? All yeah. those different things that you see. Right. And, like, I've, I've been in, you know, looking at new new development, model homes, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Where they have, like, they professional designers, stagers, and you're like, wow. And then you, you buy those new houses and then it's empty. Well, well, well think about day, that. Right? Think about that. Listen, there's something to be said about that. Yeah. When you go into a staged property, like, like if you go to a brand new build, yeah. Their average cost is about $100,000 to decorate that house inside. So when you look at staging, when you look at the artwork that's on the wall, when you look at everything that was uh, uh, that goes, they've they've upgraded the house approximately about 100k here in this area. Yeah. Now, we may think that it's a lot, but you yeah. have to remember for marketing tips, for marketing purposes, the builder knows that this pulls on heartstrings. Yeah. Right? So they're willing to pay a little bit more in marketing in order to get the end result which is capture you as a client, yeah. right? So I think as, as a seller, like it's, what, what I'm hearing from you is we have to think like marketers, right? Oh, we have to down. think what's gonna appeal to the buyer. Hands down. And take away our own personal preference, our own, yep. how we would have our house and say like, how do I get as many bodies in here That's it. to bid and, and pay top dollar? That's it, right? That's it, that is our job. Our job is to provide as much options to our clients as possible in the form of offers, yeah. right? So. Um, and we do that multiple in different ways, right? Yeah. But staging is definitely one of them. I think that's enough. I mean, I really wanted to just scratch the surface with this. I know there's so much more that we can go into, um, but I think the point is, if you're gonna sell in today's market, just know that yes, homes are selling because it's a seller market, seller's market, Yeah. but there is a range and there is a way to hit the top end of that range yes. if you partner with a professional, a seasoned agent who's done this over and over and who knows the tips and strategies to get you there. Right? right, right, right. That that would be as a homeowner, guys, I would I would first kind of figure out what your goals are, right? If you are looking to get the tip top of the market, not leave any money on the table, right? Yeah. Then um, how you do things matter, yeah. right? And that agent that you end up picking is definitely gonna matter, yeah. right? So ask these types of questions, right? Ask, ask them, hey, listen, what are these small little things that are gonna end up pushing me over, yeah. right? Those things will matter. And that ultimately can mean the difference between, in our market, right, 50, 100, yep. 200, 300,000 dollars or more, That's right. which will impact your future, your next destination That's right. you know, substantially. That's right. All right, guys, well, there you go. We got Rob, uh, Rob Ortiz, top listing agent on our team. Um, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, they need some Instagram, you can get a hold of it at, at myrealtorrob.com. Uh, I'm sorry, myrealtorrob <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can get a hold of me that way. There we go, guys. Feel free to reach out if you need anything. Uh, Rob will definitely lay you out some plans, some strategy, get you some options, and help you get top dollar. Right on. Later.